We welcome our participants to this session on Understanding NAC and NIRF. It's an honor for us to have with us as the resource person an expert in this field, Mr. Srihari Pingle, Vice Principal and Assistant Professor, SNRs, DGM Commerce and BNS Science College, Sangamner Nagpur University. Mr. Pingle completed his BSc in Chemistry, Zoology and Botany from Rani Durgavati Vishwavidyalay and MSc in Zoology, Animal Biology from Nagpur University. He has been serving as Vice Principal at SNRs, DGM Commerce and BNS Science College since 2008 and holds a 13 years of administrative experience. He has been working as Assistant Professor at SNRs, DGM Commerce and BNS Science College since July 2008. He worked as lecturer at Modern College Pune and PG Department of Zoology, Nagpur University. He holds CSIR, JRF, SRF in Department of Zoology, Pune University. Mr. Pingley worked as a project assistant in National Environmental Engineering Research Institute from 2003 to 4. We extend a warm welcome to you, sir, and we request you to start with your presentation and enlighten all our participants with your experience and expertise on this issue of NAC and NIRF. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Ranking framework that is NIRF. I am Sri Hari Ashok Pingle. Let us have a look at the emergence of NIRF, but before we do that, let us also look at the needs of ranking higher education institutions in India. One of the important objective of having a ranking for higher education institution is to decipher their performance. At the same time, we also want to see whether our HEIs are at par with the global institutions. These rankings would develop a sense of competitive excellence among the institutions. It is obvious that one would get confused between accreditation and ranking. But we should have this very clear in our mind that accreditation and ranking are two different things. Ranking is not accreditation. We all know that the higher education institutions in India, they are accredited by bodies such as National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC and NBA. However, we also know that many institutes are reluctant to come forward for the accreditation by these bodies. Ranking is open to all the institutions in India. On one side, where accreditation gives grade to these institutions, a ranking is relative to other institutions. We know that institutions having high CGPA in their accreditation, they sometimes have poor NIRF ranking. And similarly, the institutions having less CGPA in accreditation, they fare pretty well in rankings. This is because that accreditation consider the data available for a considerable span of time, say for example, three or five years. However, the rankings such as NIRF are at annual basis. So keeping all this in mind, the Ministry of Human Resource Development approved and launched National Institutional Ranking Framework in September 2015. Its methodology and parameters were decided by a committee set up by Ministry of Human Resource Development. One important aspect of these rankings is that it can have separate rankings based on the type of institutions. Now we'll see what are the categories under this ranking framework and what are the eligibility criteria for an institution to participate in NIRF. Under NIRF, an institution can take part under the overall category 
or it can represent itself in the form of a university, a college of engineering, a conventional college, an institute specific to a discipline such as management, pharmacy, law, architecture and medical sciences. It is important to note over here that for overall ranking, the institute should have at least 1000 students enrolled or the institution should be a centrally funded one. Highly focused institutions, just like I said, those from the disciplines of management, pharmacy, law, architecture, etc. can take part through that category. Undergraduate and postgraduate colleges can also participate in NIRF. However, each of these institutions should have at least three batches of the students graduated in some programs. There's an encouragement for schools or departments of universities if they want to participate in NIRF independently, they can do so by registering separately. However, open universities and affiliating universities which do not have teaching departments at campus are not eligible to participate in this ranking framework. Now, how is the data collected under NIRF? The data is collected through a dedicated portal of NIRF and the institution is expected to upload the data link on the institutional website. The data of past three years has to be kept in archive and it should remain open to the public for transparency and scrutiny. NIRF can validate the data through physical checks such as of audit reports and through international databases, for example, in case of research via Scopus, Web of Science and Indian Citation Index. In all, there are five parameters under NIRF. These parameters are teaching, learning and resources, research and professional practice, graduation outcomes, outreach and inclusivity, and perception. These five parameters, they carry 100 marks each. However, the ranking weightage provided to these parameters is different. Maximum weightage has been provided to teaching, learning and resources and research and professional practice. As can be seen here, these two parameters, they carry a ranking weightage of 0.3. Parameter number three carries a weightage of 0.2 and remaining two parameters, they carry a weightage of 0.1 each. That means the number of marks multiplied by the ranking weightage would decide your ranking for that particular parameter. Now, to begin with, you have to register your institution on NIRF portal. For that, you have to assign the responsibility of a nodal officer to one of the faculty member of your institution. Followed by that, you can register on the NIRF portal after the notification is released by NIRF which is generally around the month of August and September. The website is nirfindia.org. After registering the institutional details, you would get a login ID. It can be separate for overall category and for college category. Pre-registered institutions, that means those institutions who had participated in the earlier years, they will have their login credentials already available on the NIRF portal. They will have to validate their credential in the coming years. In the coming videos, we will talk about all the five parameters and how one can improve the performance of the institution in these parameters. Thank you very much.